Hello guys, what's up? So today, we have two T's right here. And a Mythbuster video. So, since this is the 17th video, it's an odd one. So, we'll continue to tradition and do an old world species. So, here, it, I'll say this right now, it may not be a great Mythbuster video, but I'll try to relay as much information as I can about these species since uh, this is the first year I actually worked with uh, Australian species and to be honest I didn't even realize that these actually even exist I didn't even know that there was tarantulas in Australia until they just surfaced not too long ago in uh, collections so the ones I'm going to be featuring in this video are two of them these are my only Australian species that I have in my collection as of now. It is the one on the left is a three inch female Selino Cosmia Crassy Peeps. And this one here is a Selino Typus species Glomelva. So I'm pretty sure these two species will be typical and could be kept for the same way as the other species in the genus uh, Selenocosmia, you know, like the um, Selenocosmia species Ephra, and you have one called the Rattlesnake Tarantula, <laughs> I'd love to have those, that's really cool. And for the Selenotypus, um, could be the Plummet Peeps also, they could be cared the same way. So in Canada, we only have about three available in the hobby, um, you already seen two that they have available. Also, the ones I don't have yet is Selino Typus uh, Plum Peeps. So, yeah, let's get started. So, start off with the common names. These are the common names that I came to figure out myself. Um, since there's really not very much information available on the internet regarding the species, but uh, the SG, which is the species Glomelva, is Australian Glomelva Blonde Whistling or Barking Spider. Now why is it called the whistling spider and barking spider? Well it's essentially the way they stridulate, it's not typically uh, heard like in the P. muticus or the T. blondi. So the way they rub their hairs are in such a way that it gives like a barking sound. So this is why they call it the barking spider. And the Selino Cosmia crassy peeps is called the Australian whistling tarantula. I think this one here is the most common available this one okay so the latin names um selenotypus species glomelva so there is no real uh second name for it so we call it species in glomelva which is where the specimen is originally found or where it originates and here we have selenocosmia crassi peeps now the reason why I underlined it is that it's the Selino Cosmia species is pretty diverse. Uh, you have the Dichromata that comes from French Guiana in South America. Then you have some species of Selino Cosmia in Thailand and other parts of Asia. A typical example is my uh, last no, it's my Selino Cosmine species. Uh, you know Eva that I recently updated her not too long ago. And then you have ones that are residing in Australia, such as this one. But many of the hobbyists tend to put this into a different genus called Foligus. So I personally think Foligus would be better because um, Selena Cosmia is a rather uh, diverse uh, Latin name to describe the species. Okay, so the pronunciations is as follows, Selenotypus and Selenocosmia crassi peeps. That's how you say it. So, pretty easy. Okay, availability and costs. Well, I didn't say this enough. Uh, as before, uh, these species are not available in online pet stores. No, in pet stores, sorry. They're available in online dealers. So, if you... Um, Checked my helpful links onto tea dealers. Uh, dealers I recommend buying from is uh, Ken the Bug Guy, um, PetCenter.USA, which is Paul Becker, 
and Kelly Swift's inverse. They seem to have a variety of collection in there. I think I did see a couple of uh, Australian species. So the prices, I really don't know what they sell for in the U.S., but in Tarantula, Canada, uh, this one here I paid about 60 bucks for about an inch and a half. Now it's around two and a half inches. And this female, three inches, I paid for around 125. So that's pretty typical for a three inch female. Okay, so now about the size, the growth rate, and the lifespan of these species. Well, as you know, these species are from Australia. So these are an old world terrestrials. So you can expect them to have a slightly faster growth rate than your typical beginner species, such as Girozea. So they're not by much. So the males live about five years, whereas the females live double than that. They have 10 to 12 years. So mature females in some cases have a brighter shade brown to them, whereas the males have a lighter shade of brown, kind of like a dirty blonde appearance. So mature males do not have tibial hooks, but they do have bulbous pedipalps. So about the sizes, usually on average, they are considered to be a medium large tarantula, having an excess leg span of five and a half to six inches. Males live, well, males will have a four and a half to five and a half, depending on the size of the specimen, as some specimens do vary. So the enclosure setup. Okay, so as you know, these are old world terrestrials, so you kind of want to give them a H. lividum like setup. So like I recommend uh, for slings, um, pill jars that you can buy from the pharmacy, fill around three quarters of the way with eco earth, a substrate, and you just keep it slightly moist and uh, you'll be good. For juveniles, um, such as my Glomelva, I use a 16 ounce uh, deli container, or you can go for the 32 inch, 32 ounce variety, and they'll burrow just like my trapdoor. So this is what my Glomelva looks like. This is Terry. So let me try to see if he can come out. If not, then that's okay. As you can see, he's around two and a half inches. And he doesn't want to come out. Anyway, so I'm not going to disturb him too much. So you probably can hurt his uh, stridulation a bit. But then they're at the web like crazy, and uh, it's actually pretty cool. Oh, well, he's let's see if I can try to get him out of there. No, no he doesn't want to come out. Hmm. He's pretty cool anyway. All right, and for the adults, quarter keepers is the best way to go. Uh, you could use a, I'm not actually show you my specimen right now. You've probably seen this during the full enclosure tutorial. It's a normal size critter keeper with around uh, halfway filled with eco earth, a substrate, and they burrow. Just as you see right here, that's where Nicole is. There he is. Okay, about the care sheet, 80% uh, humidity uh, and 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit will do suffice, just like your G. rosea. They're pretty easy to keep. Sometimes I just miss once a week and just keep in a water dish full at all times. All right, now I'm going to talk about the Hannibility and the Venom. So this are one of the species that I do not recommend handling whatsoever. In my opinion, uh, the Australian species are probably one of the most venomous tarantula specimens that I have worked with. 
uh, I still believe that the most potent ve venom comes from the Stromatopelma calciatum and it has a more likely chance of biting you than an S. crassi peeps. So the S. crassipeeps really behaves a lot like H. lividum. They are very defensive, uh, they are very quick, and they will not hesitate to let you know that they're unhappy. So yeah, they're typical pet holes. So about breeding about these species, I really don't have much information on this species since I haven't bred these before, nor I have seen uh, much information available on arachnoborts. But I heard it's can be a little bit difficult species to breed. Uh, you know, you do have cannibalism that you can have between the male and the female. Uh, their egg sacs are probably not the greatest. I heard from a particular website. I'll actually go to the website to show it to you. Uh, they can get a 50 to 60 eggs. So may not be the greatest, but heck, if you can find the right buyers, definitely you'll um, luck out in this one. So while I find that website, I'll talk to you about the recommendations about them. I consider these to be more for an experienced owner. Um, if you can deal with H. lividum, uh, the cobalt blue, then you're pretty much set for one. Just because I wouldn't suggest owning one right away because of their aggressive temperament and their highly venomous nature. So usually if you saw it during the tea recommendations videos, I usually tend to recommend stuff like G. rosea, B. smithy, avic, avic as uh, good beginner species since they're easier to care for, uh, they're not as aggressive and their venom is really not medically significant. So yeah, this is where I got the website from, it's uh, reptilepark.com.au from an Australian website so I guess I could try to trust this one here it tells you that the venom is quite toxic I'm just gonna put this on the link for the video description for you guys to enjoy it and yeah they stay about 50 eggs in there all right so anyways so that is the Mythbuster video of the Australian species so the next video I'm going to be touching up is the Pomphibedia species, another popular request and uh, hopefully I'll do it. Alright guys, see you later.